This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 is a scale analysis of the vertical momentum equation. This lecture expects you to know the materials from the scale analysis of the horizontal momentum equation where the methodology that's going to be used here is introduced and discussed in more detail. In that lecture, we defined a set of variables that were representative of the horizontal velocity scale, the vertical velocity scale, the horizontal length scale, the vertical length scale, a ratio of pressure to density, a horizontal pressure fluctuation scale, and a time scale that was based upon the length scale, the horizontal length scale, and the horizontal velocity scale. In this case, you can view U and W as representative of the speed or the magnitude of the velocity. The numbers that we use in the scale analysis of the horizontal momentum equation are given here. U at 10 meters per second and W at 1 centimeter per second. L at, at 10 to the 6 meters or about 1,000 kilometers. H at 10 to the 4th meters or about 10 kilometers. Those are the scales that are going to differentiate this scale analysis from the previous scale analysis in the horizontal direction. We're going to use the same procedure. We are going to estimate the acceleration term, the d by dt term, with w, the scale factor for the vertical wind, and then the u and l are going to be representative of the time derivative, which in this case u over l is the reciprocal of the time scale factor and has units of per second. Here the curvature term is represented by the scales of the horizontal speed over the radius of the earth. The pressure gradient term is going to be represented by p naught over rho h. Here is the h, which is the scale factor in the z direction, in the vertical direction. Here's gravity. Here's the Coriolis term, which is going to be u times f, and then the viscosity, which is going to be nu times the vertical scale factor over h squared. When we substitute numerical values into that equation, we see that the viscosity is very small, 10 to the minus 15th. We see that the Coriolis term is 10 to the minus 3, which would have been quite large in the horizontal momentum equation. However, here in the vertical momentum equation, we have gravity and we have the representation of the pressure gradient force, and they are both up at around a value of 10. The curvature term is at 10 to the minus 5, and the vertical acceleration is at 10 to the minus 7. Hence, in this analysis, we see a very large balance between the vertical pressure gradient and gravity, which you should recognize as the hydrostatic relationship. If you think about this for a moment, what it tells you is that the vertical momentum equation, this equation for dw dt, in the case of the scale factors for a large-scale mid-latitude flow, the vertical momentum equation reduces to the hydrostatic relationship. If you compare the acceleration to these two terms, they are eight orders of magnitude difference. Hence, the ability to use the vertical momentum equation to estimate the vertical velocity is essentially non-existent. It's very difficult to do because it's very difficult to do a calculation that allows you to turn out a quantity that you're interested in that's eight orders of magnitude smaller than the other terms of the equation. Hence, we are left with a problem of how to compute vertical motion. We know that vertical motion is important because rising motion leads to clouds and precipitation because as the air rises, it cools. 
but the vertical acceleration is eight orders of magnitude smaller than the hydrostatic balance. Hence, W must be diagnosed from some sort of balance. We have to turn out W in a way that it is calculated so that the conservation principles are realized. That is, the W is often calculated as the term that, when added to the other terms, allows conservation to occur. There is an exception to this that W can be quite large at small scales, thunderstorms and in tornadoes, where the Coriolis effect is small, as well as where the vertical accelerations can become comparable to those accelerations that are represented in the hydrostatic balance. From the scale analyses that we have done for large-scale mid-latitude dynamics, there are two balances that dominate the observed flow, the geostrophic balance and the hydrostatic balance. The hydrostatic balance, of course, occurs everywhere in the atmosphere. However, we have restricted this to something we call middle latitudes. It could be middle latitudes or high latitudes because what is different about dynamics is what goes on in the tropics. And in the tropics, if you go back to the lectures on the Coriolis force, the Coriolis force becomes small in the tropics. It formally disappears at the equator. Hence, the rotational aspects of the flow that are associated with the Coriolis force become less important in the tropics. Therefore, we often see a separation between middle latitude dynamics and tropical dynamics because of the influence of the rotation of the Earth. And with that, we end the scale analysis of the vertical momentum equation.